is the CBC Hourly News. I'm Rafi Vigod. Prime Minister Stephen Harper says Canada has reached an agreement on softwood lumber with the United States. He made the announcement today in the House of Commons. Harper says Canadian producers will have unrestricted access to the U.S. under current market conditions. The U.S. will return $4 billion of the $5 billion already taken in duties on Canadian softwood imports. The Atlantic provinces are exempted from the seven-year deal. As Louise Elliott reports, opposition parties were quick to react. The opposition quickly accused Harper of using the Commons to spin a deal that no one has had the chance to examine. Liberal leader Bill Graham. As in all agreements, the devil is in the details. Graham also accused Harper of buying in to U.S. pressure at the expense of Canadian industry. This, Mr. Speaker, is a great day. Unfortunately, it's a great day for American industry, for American politics in trade, and it's a disaster for Canada, for free trade, and the Canadian industry, Mr. Speaker. NDP leader Jack Layton agreed. The fact is that the previous government, and now the current government, is selling out. Today's deal comes after intense U.S. pressure and opposition from some of Canada's industry leaders. The Bush administration was eager to seal a deal before a deadline tonight on appealing the latest NAFTA ruling. It's too soon to know what the real impact on Canadian industry will be, or whether Harper has risked political support here for smoother ties with Washington. Louise Elliott, CBC News, Ottawa. The Bank of Canada is predicting the country's economy will continue to grow at a steady pace. The bank's governor, David Dodge, attributes the expansion to high commodity prices and strong domestic demand. He also says it's likely interest rates will continue to rise. James Fitzmorris has the details. The central bank is forecasting the economy will grow by 3.1% this year and slightly less in the two years to follow. This being largely driven by the high price of oil and metals, which are being sold in a world economy that is doing well. Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge says the growth comes despite increased foreign competition for Canadian goods and a high Canadian dollar slowing down exports. All factors considered, the Canadian economy is judged to be operating at or just above its production capacity. The most immediate impact of all of this for consumers, interest rates are likely to continue rising. But Dodge isn't hinting when or by how much the rate may increase. The move is meant to keep inflation in check. The core inflation rate is hovering around 2% annually, but the bank says the rate will be volatile over the next year as Ottawa plans to cut the GST, which will lead to an apparent drop in the price of most goods. James Fitzmorris, CBC News, Ottawa. The former Minister of Education in Ontario is the ninth person to declare his candidacy for the federal Liberal leadership. Gerard Kennedy told supporters in Ottawa today that the Liberals are the party of social progress in Canada. Liberals see our country as a land of infinite potential. We understand our good fortune and opportunities, but we understand the absolute importance of matching privilege with responsibility and ambition with compassion. Kennedy ran food banks in Edmonton and Toronto before going into politics. Ken Dryden is expected to announce his candidacy tomorrow. Researchers at the University of Toronto have found that a naturally occurring protein in the brain seems to curb the nerve damage caused by Alzheimer's disease. The discovery could eventually help lead to a better treatment for the disease. Alzheimer's affects 10% of people over 65. That's about 290,000 Canadians. The newly found protein stops the progression of Alzheimer's. The disease slowly leads to memory impairment, behavioral changes, and dementia. The research is published in today's edition of the journal Nature. And that's the news to this hour. For news updated throughout the day and night, stay tuned to CBC Radio. You can also go to our website at cbc.ca. And now the weather forecast for most of southern Ontario. First for Toronto, Hamilton and Niagara. Tonight a few clouds, the low near minus one. For Friday, sunny, the high near 13 but cooler along the lakeshore. For Windsor, Essex, Chatham, Kent, tonight clear, the low near two. For Friday, sunny, the high near 16. For Sarnia, Lambton, London, Middlesex, Elgin, Oxford and Brant, Haldeman and Norfolk, tonight clear, the low near minus one. For Friday, sunny, the high near 14.
For Huron and Perth, Waterloo, Wellington, York, and Durham. Tonight clear, the low near minus 4. For Friday, sunny, the high near 13. For Grey Bruce, Barry, and Collingwood, tonight clear, the low near minus 2. For Friday, sunny, the high near 12. For Aurelia and Midland, Bracebridge and Gravenhurst, Huntsville and Perry Sound, Halliburton and Algonquin, Renfrew, Pembroke and Barry's Bay. Tonight clear, the low near minus 6. For Friday sunny, the high near 13. For Peterborough and the Kawarthas, tonight clear, the low near minus 3. For Friday sunny, the high near 13. For Belleville, Quinty, Northumberland, Kingston and Prince Edward County, tonight a few clouds, the low near minus 1. For Friday, sunny, the high near 12. And finally, for the Ottawa region, Brockville, Leeds and Grenville, Prescott and Russell, Cornwall and Morrisburg, Smiths Falls and Perth, tonight clear, the low near minus 3. For Friday, sunny, the high near 12. Hi there, and welcome. This is Northern Lights on CBC Radio. My name is Andrea Ratuski. 